What's up folks, it's Dominic. Welcome back to my channel. I appreciate you being here. Today we're talking about what is the first lens you should buy when getting into photography. Let's take a look. To make this real quick video, down, dirty, quick, easy, and be done with it. Get the kit lens and that's it. That's your first piece of glass. Bye. Okay, so yes, that is the first piece of glass that you should get. They're cheap, they're affordable, they come with the body most of the times. You can get them super cheap used. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you already have a kit lens. So you have a kit lens and now you're looking to purchase your first uh, nice lens to take you to the next level. So there are two sides of that coin. A lot of people are going to disagree with the opinions that I'm gonna give here, but this is just what I found uh, in my photography career. So. Everyone's gonna tell you to get a fast 50, and what a fast 50 is, is a 50 millimeter, 1.8, 1.4, 1.2 lens. Um, and that should be your first lens, because it's cheap, they're quality, they're um, durable, they're gonna last you a long time, you're probably not gonna outgrow it, and everyone needs a 50 millimeter focal length. And I agree with all those things. 50 millimeter, a fast 50 is a great, uh, a great lens to step up to, I really like them. That being said, I find them limiting to my style. You need to find your style, so you won't know that until you actually try it. I find them a bit limiting and they cramp my style. I also don't really love the 50 millimeter focal length. Um, for me, I just think it's a very plain looking image and um, it looks very ordinary. I like them a little bit wider or a little bit tighter uh, and that's just my style. So for me, I really, really recommend a 35 millimeter um, F 1.8 or 1.4 prime. Those are a little bit more expensive typically than the 50. They're not as popular, but they're gonna give you a little bit wider field of view and you can shoot more things with them right off the bat. You're not gonna outgrow the 35 millimeter focal length. I have that on my camera bodies about 80% of the time and I really, really love that look. Um, you can get in tight uh, and you can get the same look essentially as a 50 if you're just closer to your subject and then you can pull out, get a little bit wider and if you're in a small room, you have more flexibility with it. So the 35 millimeter is an awesome lens. You're looking at it right now being filmed on the a7 III. Overall, I just think the 35 millimeter is a really, really great lens to start out on. That being said, I'm gonna give you one more option and that is a cheap third party fixed aperture zoom. And why do I give those specifics on, um, why do I do specifics, air quotes, why do I give those parameters on a zoom lens? Because you can get a lot of zooms and you can get zooms very, very cheap. You can get a 3.5 to 5.6 zoom for probably $100 depending on your camera brand. But that zoom is pretty much the kit lens and it's not very good quality. You're gonna see a lot of blurriness. You're gonna see some distortion on the corners. You're gonna see um, not very good colors. You're gonna see um, chromatic aberrations, which is a lot of techie geek talk for it's not that great of a lens. Now, if you step up to a fixed aperture lens, meaning that the F4 stays on the wide all the way through to the end of the lens um, at 75, you're gonna see that the quality of that lens is a lot nicer. The glass is a little bit bigger, the aperture is a little bit larger, you can get to faster shutter speeds, and um, you're gonna see less chromatic aberration, less distortion, better colors, better contrast. This is a great example of what I'm talking about. This is the Tamron 28 to 75 zoom lens, and this is a bit expensive, especially for your first lens, but you don't need an F2.8, you can get an F4. Uh, Tamron, Tamron and Sigma are putting out some really, really great fixed aperture zoom lenses uh, for pretty affordable prices. I've seen them $400 used, up to about six or $700, and they're really, really great. Um, the reason I recommend this for beginners and almost recommend it more than a prime, even as a prime shooter, is this gives you the opportunity to see different focal lengths in one shot. So you don't have to buy multiple primes um, to see which, what, you know, what fits your style and what fits your look and what you're shooting. If you slap on a 28 to 75 zoom, well, you can now see a 28. You can go through a 35, to go to a 50, go to a 75, and uh, it just gives you a lot of flexibility and versatility, but more so it gives you a lot of experience at different focal lengths very, very quickly. Um, if you're going to be doing primes, you need to purchase all those primes to get you that experience. And I think it's all about experience and knowledge and shooting a lot of photos so those zooms can actually do that for you quicker. Uh, is the quality gonna be there? No, zooms are always gonna be inferior to primes in my opinion. I'm always shooting primes. Primes are always on my bodies and I just think they're the top echelon of um, performance. But that being said, you're just getting into the game. You're just learning and so a nice zoom will do you wonders and last you a very, very long time. So those are my opinions on it. Most of all, get your gear used, get it cheap, invest in glass first. I'm always preaching that. So 
that's all I got for you guys today. I appreciate you being here. If you like this video, please share it with someone who's just getting into the photography game. Shoot me a like and uh, leave me a comment below. I wanna hear what, what lens you're working with right now. What was your first lens and what lens do you think about purchasing? Until next time, guys, I appreciate you. Peace. That's a wrap.